Well then, legendary landscape designer Bunny Williams. Yes. This week on the podcast, we are celebrating the month of September, or as it is more well known on the internet, Halloween Eve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next month is October, and a lot of important things happen in October. October's a big month, and people are excited about October. So many things, oh, so many things happen in October. Of course, when people think of October, they think of two things. Number one, Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes. I think that's the first thing on people's minds. And number two... Uh, Woodmas, the Ed Wood Christmas. It's on October 10th, people. Look it up. Yes. Now, it's not just Woodmas and Canadian Thanksgiving that happen in October. There's a lot of other things that happen in October. According to Bing.com, which is a thing I use instead of Google because I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm basically a ticker. Yes. <laughs> I use B. I use Bing. B I N G. That spells Bing. <laughs> According to Bing, the first full week of October is actually Get Organized Week. So that's uh. Or wait, uh, is it the second week, or is it the first week? Damn it, I'm not well organized. Oh shit! I just ruined Get Organized Week with my unorganization. Yeah. Irony. Did you also know, Bunny, that October is Raptor Month? It's 100% true. Raptor October, Month. October is Raptor Month. So be sure to put up your raptor tree. Be sure to hang up your raptor stockings and hide your raptor eggs under your pillow yes. for the raptor fairy. October is also, this is another uh, true thing. October is also National Sarcasm Month. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't wait for Sarcasm Month. October. You know who else is excited for Sarcasm Month? Amber. She's <laughs> so excited for Sarcasm Month. October is, is when I, I feel a little twinge and miss New York. Oh, you feel a twinge, do you? Yeah, nothing serious. Not a big twinge. But but fall is really not quite the same in Colorado. Yeah. We don't really have have trees, you know. And what we do, we ha are evergreen trees, you know, columbines and aspens and stuff like that. So if it wasn't for the for the coldness of the weather and pumpkin spice ads i wouldn't know but new york was yeah. beautiful <sighs> i went to new york in november once my dad ran the new york city marathon yeah and the first thing we got into a taxi and we're driving through New York, and I'm like, oh, man, we're in New York. I'm so excited. We're riding a taxi in New York. It, wow, I can't, I, I can't wait to see what we're going to see. And that's a man peeing. <laughs> that happened quicker than I was expecting. Yep, that man's peeing on the street. Well, let me tell you how. See, see first off, it's only a twinge for New York, because New York is not New York anymore for me. You know? Yeah. Giuliani did way too good of a job of cleaning up New York and it's no fun anymore. You know, it used to be fun when I was a kid, you know, 18, 20, whatever, you know, in there and be like, you know, let's go to New York because we could die there. You know, <laughs> yeah. it was dangerous. That's the same way, that's the same way uh, people in Phoenix uh, treat Tucson. Yeah. So like like um, where I was on Long Island, it was like easy. You just drive to the train station, which is only about ten miles away. You take a train into Penn Station, you know. And I, I even worked in New York City for a while, so I would do that commute every day. Okay, 
But yeah. when you're in New York and you're you're especially in New York at that period in history, you get cold really quick. Yeah. You know? Because there were guys peeing and guys in trash cans and you know, the homeless people were all over, you know? And when you would get into Penn Station, you could take the escalator up to 7th Avenue and you would cross at the light. Okay? But now, if you were a savvy New Yorker, what you realized is that if you don't take the escalator, you walk through the subway and you you come out under the Statler Hotel on the other side of the street, and you come up, and you're on the other side of the street. Okay? So you don't yep. have to wait for the light. Ah, gotcha. But that walk reminds me of, of the end of the movie The Sentinel. Hmm. Okay? There okay. are... They, it's full of Morlock. It is literally, it is literally full of Morlocks, you know, that all sleep in this, in this tunnel, you know? So there are old bag ladies and homeless people and people shooting up and people taking shits as you're walking by and, and veterans without legs and without arms and uh, all, all kinds all kinds you know and yeah. and that's and you take that walk that that horrible walk so that you don't have to wait on wait for a traffic light yeah 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 <laughs> only the savvy new yorkers knew that though yeah it's like i could so just get killed down here yeah. Nice. You know, you would you, you you on this walk, you would see people who were definitely eyeballing you, you know, eyeballing you as as you went by, and maybe making a move of some sort, and you just give them that the crazy face, the crazy yeah, don't Whitaker fuck eye. with me face. Yeah. yeah. Forest Whitaker eye. And then they're like, okay, that one will fight back. I'll just stay here. <laughs> Yeah, but we uh, were talking about fall. Oh no, we were talking about holidays. We were talking about October. That's yes. what we were talking about. October eleventh, the day after Woodmas, is National Take Your Teddy Bear to Work Day. Seriously, who makes up these fucking holidays? <laughs> I always wondered that because there's like the major holidays, and then there's those ones that don't count that no one really knows about except for uh morning radio DJs and that one person at your job. Yeah. Happy National Take Your Secretary to Lunch Day. <laughs> oh, how come you're not wearing a festive tie for National Talk Like a Pirate Day? How come you're not wearing a pirate tie? <laughs> like, like, I swear to God, people are just making this shit up, which is why I am announcing right now Mm -hmm. that September 17th is now, now that I've announced it, National Masturbate with Your Left Hand Day. Ooh. September 17th, National Masturbate with Your Left Hand Day. Toss it up a little bit, you know? Can, can Can we combine that with the stranger? Possibly. Because that would be doubly strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it all depends on on how you celebrate the day. Yeah. Some people celebrate it different. What if yeah. What if you are left handed? That seems unfair. Uh, then you just don't celebrate. You're not allowed. You're not okay. You're not allowed. Fuck you, left handed people. So here's 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 this this here is is true, and it, it blows my mind. October twenty second is two different days. Okay. Okay. We had we had a bit of homework here on the the Pope on Film podcast that I think dealt with this holiday. October twenty second is National Mother in Law Day. 
Okay. And and National Nut Day. I believe we covered National Nut Day. Yeah, so hey, October 22nd is National Nut Your Mother-in-Law Day. (laughs) So... Basically, October twenty second. Which was is right. Which was Porn also Hub a Day. homework. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. October twenty second is National Pornhub Day because it's National Nut Your Mother in Law Day, so that works. Yes. Also, apparently, October is this thing called Halloween. Apparently, it's a holiday that has something to do with candy. I don't know. I, I've heard also, talk of it. Yeah. Also, in October is probably one of the biggest and best days of the year. Bunny's birthday. Yes. So Bunny, as is his right, will be choosing a whole month of scary movies and horror movies and spooky films and noir and whatever the hell he wants. I to compliment and I his, have I have no idea yet. I I figured that when I mentioned this that you would say that. That is what I figured would happen. So you might have to pick my favorite movies for me. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see what happens. You still have some time. Because I'm feeling like a lot of a lot of my movies would be kind of pedestrian, you know. Like I I love the Usual Suspects, and I love the Thing. But I also think like I, I should only pick three out of the month because I think we we do need to celebrate Woodness. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, Woodness is on a Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would we you, yeah okay, yeah. But we'll see what happens. But still, it is your right to pick a whole month of movies to compliment your boyth day, as Maxwell calls it. And anyway, that brings us back to September, which really is just an October prequel. Therefore, this week we are getting ready for October with a film that I legitimately consider to be one of the scariest horror movies of all time, the 2006 documentary Jesus Camp, or, <laughs> or as it's called in Spanish, El Jesus Camp, and if you thought I speak Spanish, then you're crazy racist. <laughs> So you just think because I'm a brown Mexican that I speak racist, that I speak Spanish, that's racist. Yes. You're racist. Way to go. And look, this is going to be, this is going to be odd. This is going to be awkward. Okay, look. Um, yes, this documentary is hideous. It's horrible. And we will definitely spend a decent amount of time uh, ripping it apart yes. and tackling Christianity and the Bible and evangelicalism and all of that. Yeah. But I want to start off this discussion of this evangelical documentary, deep breath in parentheses, yes. by doing something completely unexpected. And coming to the defense of the evangelicals in this fucking documentary. (laughs) Okay? Okay. Because this is how it went down. The documentary crew said, hey, we heard you have an evangelical camp for kids. Hey, we want to do a film that totally shows you and your lifestyle and how you're, you're, you're bringing these kids to Jesus. So... So, can you just sign this piece of paper that gives us the rights to film everything at your camp and then put it in a documentary? We're totally going to be fair to you guys. Just FYI, totally 100% fair. We're not going to take any sides at all. We're on your side, if anything. So, can you just sign this paper to give us the rights to film everything that happens at your Jesus camp and we'll totally uh, show it in a friendly light. Oh, thank you for signing this. You're going to love the documentary. It's going to be great. And, uh, okay. Is she gone? (laughs) It's time to totally ruin these stupid Christians. (laughs) (laughs) And there are literally scenes where all you're seeing is a woman preaching to kids and the kids being moved by the preaching, but literally, I can I can see the filmmakers 
in their editing studio going, okay, what music do you have playing during this scene? Okay, that's not evil enough. We need eviler music. Can we get some <laughs> eviler music in here? Okay, that's good. Now, okay, now play it again. Let's see. Yeah, that's still not evil enough. We need eviler music during this praying sequence. Do we have any, like, uh, music that's just lying around or anything? Well, I've got this old track here called Dr. Doom Controls the World. Yes, <laughs> let's use that one. Let's use that one during the prayer sequences. Yeah. So then the movie comes out, and uh, the woman in the film and, and, and is, is upset, and all of these Christians are up in arms and pissed off, and unfortunately, rightly so, they're like, yeah, we were completely railroaded. They're completely, this is a biased film. It is biased against us. They said that they were going to, that they were going to uh, treat us nicely. And instead, we've just been railroaded by this film, which just laughs at us. And it's not fair. Yeah. And then the documentary filmmakers come out and say, okay, first of all, we would just like to say that this film takes no sides. Yeah. This film shows both sides both sides of the issue okay we worked hard to make sure that we took no sides in this we are showing both sides and there's nothing in any way we treated these people fairly and we're sorry that they think that uh we were out to get them yeah but anyway what were we doing oh yeah uh advertising this movie okay how about this for an advertisement uh right in big letters on the top of the poster let's put the scariest film of the year <laughs> watch these stupid christians being stupid christianity sucks 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 the bible is a lie and we need another holocaust presenting the documentary jesus camp about yes. christians who suck that's a good poster That'll definitely put people's butts in seats. Okay, let's go. Let's go release this film. And I'm sorry. I yeah. hate to have to come to the defense of these fucking Christians, but this film is definitely out to get them. Yeah, you know. I mean, they deserve it, but I'm just saying I... I have not seen a more ambushed documentary in my life. The only other uh, ambushed documentary that I can think of is a 2003 documentary from yeah. alleged journalist Martin Bashir called Living with Michael Jackson. <laughs> So Martin Bashir is this British guy, and he made a name for himself by doing this documentary where he was interviewing Princess Diana. It was really big in England. But how the guy, old is this? Because this is starting to sound more familiar to me. Um, it's a 2003 documentary. He, Michael Jackson was still alive, and this was basically the documentary that brought down Michael Jackson. Yeah. Because uh, Martin Bashir went to Michael Jackson and said, "Hey, Michael, I'm Martin. I'm a journalist." Uh, I'm a big fan, and uh, we want to do a documentary that shows you and your charitable work and how great you are. We really just want to do this wonderful documentary to just show everyone how amazing you are and how you've still got how yeah. you've still got it. And we just we just really want to suck your dick, Michael. We just want to suck your dick and just get you off. And you're great. And if you could just sign this piece of paper and give us an unfiltered access to your entire life, we're going to show the Michael Jackson that you want everyone to see. He signed the piece of paper. Okay, let's get some incriminating shit on the double. What is that? <laughs> you, have, you have images of Michael Jackson having uh, sleepovers with underage kids? Great. Let's, let's roll that immediately. Okay, <laughs> what I need to do some uh, record some narration. I was out to get Michael Jackson, this weird, creepy fucking creep. This fucking <laughs> creepy ass motherfucking piece of shit. Fuck Michael Jackson. Fuck him in his ass. He probably likes that. That weirdo freak. Yeah. And that's the documentary. Literally, by the end of the documentary, Martin Bashir is interviewing Michael Jackson, who is in fucking tears. Yeah. Because literally the entire thing was just like a ploy 
to to like ruin Michael Jackson's life, basically. <laughs> and that is why we're watching uh, Living with Michael Jackson next week. And I'm I, and I'm still down with it. You know. Yeah, I'm still yeah. down with it. I I used to. I used to love Michael Jackson, not so much, not so much for his music, but just for being so fucking weird, you know? Yeah, this, this documentary is, it, it covers that like year in Michael Jackson's life where it's like, Hey, guess what? I'm living in Saudi Arabia now. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I'm going to take my kids out to the zoo, but have them wear Halloween masks in public and scar them for life. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I'm going to dangle my baby from a hotel balcony. Loved it. Like that. Loved it yeah. all. You know, yeah, I love that, that he, same. I love that he slept in a hyperbaric chamber. I love that he had a chimpanzee named bubbles. I love that he wanted to buy the elephant man's bones. I was like, yeah. this guy is fucking nuts. And I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. But as soon as as soon as the allegations started coming out, coming up about kids and stuff, I was like, you know what? I'm out. But the thing that I can, as far as I can tell, the allegations of abuse and sexual assault and rape and everything, and and Michael Jackson like touching kids and stuff. Yeah. That all came from this documentary because uh, in when they first showed the documentary on television, they showed everyone normally and they showed these kids and these young boys, you know, and they're like shirtless and they spent the night at Michael Jackson's house. Yeah. And then after that, the parents of those kids were so ashamed to oh my god now everyone in the globe is seeing my son shirtless at michael jackson's house holy shit you know what um i don't want to be seen as a bad parent so fuck it i'm gonna sue him (laughs) and so as much as i think that it was michael jackson inappropriate with children yes did he rape these kids no that was all just fucking uh parents who were trying to save their ass by saying Oh my God! Michael Jackson had a, a sleepovers with my kids, and that's yeah. totally not cool and not something that I 100% agreed to. So I'm gonna sue him for what he did to my kid. I'm assuming. Yeah. So unfortunately, the charges are fake, but that doesn't change the fact that he's a creepy ass motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. Yes. Hold on, I'm coming right next to you. Yes, honey? Hi. How you doing? We, as healthy as we can be, uh, uh, developed adults, yeah. see this as something that's creepy. Like, he's some creeper who's having 10-year-olds spend the night, you know, 8-year-olds, and they're getting this time. Yeah. And, and, and the baby, I mean, the baby shit. You know, fuck that. Um, and we, we think that's weird that you share sharing a bed with these kids. But you need to understand something from a, a psychological point of view. Michael Jackson is trapped in, well, was, because he's hella dead now. He was trapped in his youth at a young age because of all of the abuse that him and his family went through. It was siblings. That is through. a point. And, and be put, he was thrust into the, the limelight at such a young age. There is a reason they say that when children actors become famous, they get stuck in that mindset. Yeah. And that's not always the case, but there is a small truth behind that. And in his situation, he was so young and his father exploited him, you know, for his own benefit. And right. then, so what do you expect from this kid? He came from a shady ass background with his dad. His dad exploited him and his siblings. I mean, look at his sister. His sister, I mean, she's not the what most well balanced person in the world either. Yeah. But you know, she's also female, <clears throat> so that's okay. If she were to do something creepy like this, there would not be a rain of thunder coming down on her for it, would there? No, no. because she's a female, and she was also older. But like. You guys, I, I don't want to like be like, oh, you know, I'm going to come to Michael Jackson's defense. He wasn't creepy because as as 
well adjusted, well, as well adjusted as we can be, adults, we see that as creepy. From a psychological standpoint, he's just stuck in his youth. Yeah. You know? So to him. To kind of to kind of back up what you're saying, I, I this is one of those things that just has always st- stuck with me, you know. But years and years ago, I had seen Michael Jackson a Ma- Michael Jackson video on 2020. This is really before he even really went out on his own, you know, and he was doing some some big tour. As the Jackson Five, they were still ja- the Jackson Five at the time. But he was something like fifteen at the time. I think I'm not sure. Yeah. He he was chubby. It was a chubby Michael Jackson with his original face, and one of the things that that just kind of haunted me is like he was saying like. I don't go outside. I, I don't see people. See? I'm terrified. You know? And I was like, holy fuck, really? Yeah. I mean, this kid has spent his entire life yeah. as a performer on center stage. You know, he. at what point do you have a chance to go through the natural experience of growing up? What what point do you to experience sneaking out as teenagers. It sounds like or, we're getting a lot of wind. Where am I? Oh, oh that's because of... <laughs> Go turn my fan off. I, I'm sitting next to my fan. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, like, what, what age do you... In, in that situation, I mean, what point do you get to experience the natural progression of growing up and maturing into an adult? Yeah. You don't. Because... If when you're that young and you're put into the public eye, everything you do is scrutinized. Your dad is uh, exploiting you for his own personal gain. Yeah. And God knows what's going on behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. You know? So you, you're you terrified. You can't go out in public because, heaven forbid, that you, you fuck up somehow. You yeah. know, what are the ramifications on not only a professional standpoint, but a personal standpoint at home? Yeah. So... He didn't get to experience and grow up and mature. M- mature. I totally went like. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we're <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Um, so he's stuck in that mentality. So for him, he he cannot necessarily relate to adults in the way a normal adult would. So what does he do? He befriends children, which is creepy as fuck to us because we're adults now. But he relates to kids in a way that. Well, but I don't. I don't think that that's. I don't think that means that he is not creepy. You know, I. I mean, I think we would have to find out more about pedophiles and why somebody becomes a pedophile, which I do not know. I mean, do people become pedophiles under those same conditions? Pedophiles. I've had too many beers for this. There's different ways for people to become a pedophile it's something fucked up in their brain Uh, and then there's also the the glaring can be fucked up or they can become that way because either it was something that happened to them yeah or they were exposed in certain circumstances i say aspartame personally I mean, it just it there's there's a lot of questions about that, and nobody can really know what what gives any of us. And then I know this is going to sound really fucked up, but pedophilia can be a kink just like anything else, you yeah. know. And what gives us the kinks that we have for foot fetishists? It might be, um, you know, the way that they were down on the ground by their mother's feet. Yeah. Maybe that's why they, they like feet. Maybe that's why they like shoes. You know, for people who like to be spanked, maybe their fucking mom or dad spanked them a lot and it did something for them or just ingrained itself in their brain. And, you know, I mean, there's, or you just plain like it. <laughs> I'm not trying to, I'm just not, I'm not trying to like kink shame, but I'm also not trying to be like, oh yeah, pedophilia is a totally legit kink because yeah. it's not okay to, no. if you want to, you want to do it in your own head, you want to role play. That's a perfectly healthy way to get that out. 
you yes. know, but don't take it that, to that next level. Yeah, just don't. That's, that's crossing a line that you can't come back from. Yeah. I mean, but I'm not saying Michael Jackson was a pedophile. He also allegedly gave wine and cocaine to children. Just yes. One. Well, that's okay. Again, that goes back to the mentality because <laughs> as a teenager, you want to share things with your friends. Oh, look, I'm an adult. Here, look at my Playboy magazine. I, I totally got this. Look, we're adults now. You know? Oh, I snuck a cigarette. Here, come share it with me. You know, you don't know. Steve doesn't know because Steve was a Catholic boy and he was, he didn't experience the teenage years the way anybody busy, else did. I was too busy doing crack and fucking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that. I, you said she needed her diaper change. I didn't know she um, so yeah, I mean, so crack, wine, whatever he was giving the kids, cocaine, cocaine, crack wine, crack wine, um, Jesus crack juice, wine. Jesus, Jesus juice, all of that he was given the kids. I mean, it goes back to wanting to share that experience with your friends because he thought those kids were his friends because he was stuck in that fucking mentality. I, I, I don't think that's helping the case any. <laughs> okay, well, maybe not the drugs and alcohol. Or but the Playboy think, magazines or anything else. <laughs> well, oh, no, now, when you're a child and you get a hold of a dirty magazine, you definitely want to share it with your friends. Yes, and you might want to come and have a circle jerk with your friends, too. Yeah, we've all dealt with that, right, honey? I've never had a circle yes, jerk. Yes, you have. Why are you lying? There Why are pictures. Liar. There are pictures. The bunny says there's pictures. Zandarius. <laughs> yes. I just okay. I'm not trying to justify any of his actions. I'm just trying to get a better in. You know, helping the the listeners get better insight to the psychology of how he could be fucked up mentally enough to where he relates more with a child than he does with an adult, because. Well, but yes, but, but okay. The isolation alone that he was put through. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I think your mental diagnosis is sound. Okay. I'm but I do not, I do not think actions. that that diagnosis precludes pedophilia. <laughs> I, she thinks that's hilarious. Um, I just, I just don't know, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I can't speak on that. Like, only because there's so much to go to play, and we only know so such a limited amount from yeah. a public standpoint of what yeah. happened. Maybe he was a pedophile. Maybe he wasn't. Yeah. But that's why he, I, I personally feel that's probably why he hung out with kids rather than adults. That's why he isolated himself on Neverland Ranch. I mean, he had a fucking yeah. a park called Neverland Ranch for fuck's sake. What is Neverland Ranch? Right, where you never grow up. Never said, where you never grow up. because. And, and he said o often he felt like Peter Pan. I mean, he's never grown up. He never had a chance to. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's, that, I, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm going to give you back to Steve. I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> okay. I, he, I thought he felt like he was Peter Pan because he always wanted to fuck a small Indian woman. Tiger Lily. Just to be clear. <laughs> so happy that we had that lengthy Michael Jackson uh, conversation now and not next week when we'll be talking about the documentary. Yeah. In retrospect. Well, like I said to Bunny, we only know so much from a public standpoint. Yeah. And documentaries can be edited to show only what they want. Oh, to Jesus show. Christ. And this one is bad. This I mean, one is bad. I mean, <laughs> too, he could edit all. Everything that he has on the podcast to make us look like the most horrible parents in the fucking world, oh, yeah. and get sickness on our ass. Yeah, but Bunny loves us, and he won't do that. <laughs> and and as a matter, of, as, as a matter of fact, uh, on outside of the cinema and Are You Serious, they have a, a spot for this guy called um, Oh my God, I forget his name. Old Reverend Scott, Reverend Scott, and that's what he does. He takes their previous episodes cuts them up, and makes them say horrible, horrible things. Nice. And it's hysterical. Maxwell. Maxwell. Put down that beer. Here, take the Jack Daniels. It's stronger, and it'll get you more fucked up. 
<laughs> anyway. What was now I saying? you're just being a dick. You know Max was asleep. I think Steve is hallucinating again. It's all that LSD. It's all that. <laughs> I don't do LSD. I do MSG. Monosodium glutamate. That's what I do. It's all the Chinese food. If I had been paying yeah. attention closer in chemistry, I could probably tell you the exact chemical structure of that. Yeah. There is no way that the filmmakers of Jesus Camp can honestly say that this camp wasn't completely uh, uh, railroaded, ambushed, hog swallowed. You know, we got to saying here in Oklahoma, bunny, yeah. don't crap another farmer's feed bucket without first slapping his grandmother. Yeah, but I'm I'm really still on the side of fuck them. Fuck oh that. no 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 we're no we're getting to that. I just wanted to I just wanted to like it it I it amazes me that these filmmakers are still to this day are just like yes we tried so hard to make an impartial film like oh yeah. fuck you. fuck but, you impartial film my ass yeah but we have really as a society gotten to a point where you really can't trust anything. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so to watch anything like Jesus camp or something like that, you always have to be aware of where the bullshit's coming from, you know? Yeah. And, and that's yeah. in everything. I like watching, I like watching certain news programs. You know, I, I love watching the, the Young Turks. I watch all of their videos every day, you know. But you always have to be watching and being like, okay, they're totally bullshitting now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, they're just yeah. totally bullshitting, so whatever. Um, Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow has been consistent, consistently covering just the Trump-Russia scandal. And I yeah. love it because there's so much action going on there. It's great. It's like a great fucking spy novel. What's going yeah. on with this with this actual case, you know? Um, but Rachel Maddow likes to tell stories, and if you, which makes it very entertaining. But if you're not aware, then in a lot of cases she's telling stories, you know you can misinterpret what the actual story is. I'll give you an example. Okay. So, so she was talking about, um, this sixth grade class. Okay. And in the sixth grade class, they were having a project where they were basically being the little UN. Okay. Okay. To learn, you know, each one of them would get assigned a country that they would represent. And, you know, you would learn about their gross national product and what they export and what they... All of this for this, this little classroom you in. My and, gross national product is boogers and farts. Right. And they are trying to figure out who for their little UN they need for... Um, particular positions but trump hadn't picked those people yet yeah okay so they tweeted him and then about a week later he came out with his list of who he had chosen you know like carter page and a few others you know all of whom are under investigation now and she goes on telling you each one and why they're being investigated and how they play into the Russian scandal. Now, if you are not paying attention, you'll think that this classroom full of students actually has something to do with the story, and they do not. Yeah, that's just her way of storytelling is all the way around the world. Right. It's just a cute little lead-in to the actual story that she's doing. I mean, I'm sure the classroom of kids is true. Yeah. You know, it sounds logical to me, but in the context of what she's actually doing, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit yeah, because sense. it doesn't have anything to do with it. So, so whatever news source you're looking at, no, whatever documentary, me personally, I think, um, 
Oh God, Michael Moore. I think Michael Moore completely fucked up documentaries, and I'm kind of mad at him for that. Yeah, he did. You yeah, know, he did. because yeah, you, you Moore... can't believe any of his uh, any of his documentaries. He puts heap and helpings of bullshit into his documentaries. Yeah. Michael Moore and uh, fucking Morgan Spurlock. Yeah. I ate McDonald's for a month and I almost died. I ate McDonald's for five years and I called it college. (laughs) So fuck you, Morgan Spurlock, and your. I've been eating for three days and I'm already in the hospital. You're dead. Like fuck (laughs) you. That's the most made up piece of shit. Honest details about that. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. I mean, you don't eat fucking vegan or whatever and then go eat McDonald's for a month. That's bullshit. Yeah. You're going to get sick. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Morgan Spurlock. Fuck yeah. Him. So, <laughs> he, so here are some stats. Okay. Jesus Camp is a 2006 documentary that follows the Kids on Fire Christian Summer Camp in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Yeah. Is that ironic that this... Uh, <laughs> Christian camp is at Devil's Lake, North Dakota. I think that's what Alanis was singing about. I, I think I think it, it, it's it's a happy little accident. Yeah. This isn't your ordinary Christian camp, though. It's an evangelical Christian camp, or according to the Wikipedia page, it's a specific type of Christianity that I didn't know about that some people call charismatic Christianity. Yes. These are Christians who believe in faith healing, magical prophecy, speaking in tongues. These are the crazy Christians crying and raising their hands in the air and rolling yeah. around the floor speaking in tongues and shit. Mm-hmm. Charismatic Christian Christians believe that these are literal magic powers that are given to them from God to fight actual demons. Basically, Charismatic Christians believe that the show Supernatural is a fucking documentary. Yes. Now, this mm-hmm. documentary focuses on a number of different things, including a prayer conference and uh, a, a uh, big mega church event and some people going bowling and some young kids getting brainwashed. Oops. I yeah. mean, kids getting homeschooled, but that's basically the same thing. Yeah. But the unabashed star of the movie, well, maybe not unabashed, maybe some abashed. Yeah. Slightly a abashed. Bit, a bit abashed. Yeah. The person who is really center stage throughout this whole circus, uh, who is an adult and does not have a rat tail, is Kids on Fire founder, leader. Sunday school textbook author and Chris Farley in drag, Becky <laughs> Fisher. Yes. This is Fisher with a C. I already don't trust her. Yes. Now, this woman, I had a hard time with this podcast because I want to do this right and I want to do this um, thoroughly, but I also, you know, I want to put this in the proper context. I don't want to offend. Yeah. So uh, let me just be as honest as I can. Becky Fisher is a cunt. (laughs) But here's the thing, though. I'm so 115.8% convinced of her cuntitude that even a feminist would look at this film. Betty Friedan would see this film and go, oh, hell no, that bitch is a cunt. Yeah. That like Hillary Clinton is like in her book tour and it's like, oh, you're Betty Fisher. You're a cunt. (laughs) Like even the biggest feminist in the world would see this woman and go, oh, well, fuck this bitch. (laughs) It is really chilling seeing Becky Fisher. Uh, Becky with the horrible hair indoctrinating these poor unfortunate kids. You know yeah. what it reminds me of, though, Bunny? What? I'm so proud of this. So let's go back to Disney. You know how Disney has realized that they can make a quick buck by dusting off old animation scripts and just doing it again, but live action? Yeah. So Disney is now stuffing its calendar with live action adaptations. 
Beauty and the Beast, Alice in Wonderland, and its sequel, Alice Through the Forget Forgettable Sequel, Jungle Book, Pete's Dragon, Mulan, yada, yada, yada. That brings us to Jesus Camp. Yeah. There are scenes when Betty Fisher is yelling at these kids, and especially the scene where they're praying for and or to George W. Bush. Yes. With just a little bit of tweaking, Jesus Camp could easily become Disney's brand new live action education for deaf. <laughs> okay. Their uh, Nazi cartoon that yes. we did for homework. A, a personal yeah. favorite of mine. Hans. Yeah, you, could, you, yeah, you could get uh, Jesus Camp and turn that into the live action education for deaf. I think so, yes. And it would be fairly easy. Yes. Now, I was going to break down the plot of this film, but number one, it's a documentary, so there's no real plot to speak of. And number two, I was just too busy yelling. Yeah, so was Jeannie. Oh, she got really Yeah, that's animated. what I heard. I, I, that just brought so much joy. She started posting heart. on Facebook. I was very happy. Yes, yes, she was the one that was posting about Jesus Camp on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. It, the only the only people who saw this movie with me were uh, Bella and Maxwell. Yeah, like I was hoping to be able to sit down Natasha and watch it, especially Emerald. I really thought yeah. Emerald would have a lot to say about this film. Yeah, but no, and uh, none of them would would. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, uh, Emerald Amber and. Natasha didn't want to sit down and watch an hour and a half evangelical Christian documentary. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what their thought process was, but for whatever reason, they didn't want to watch. See now, so, see now, I, I understand how you feel about this movie. Okay. Yes. And yes, it is one sided. Okay. But first off, everything was in, that was in the movie was shit that the camp was comfortable with them filming. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, I also listened to a podcast, I get it on YouTube, called The Thinking Atheist. Yes. Uh, this was a guy who used to work in Christian radio until nice. he was like, wait, this is bullshit. And he has yeah. a lot of interesting guests and things like that. He, he uh, has, has a few talks that are really interesting. Um, and for one episode, he just opened up his call line and he had said, if any, if anybody out there has been to a place like this camp, call us and tell your experiences. And dude, the fucking horror stories run so much further than really? this, than this shows at all. This is tame. This is very, very tame. Yeah. Interesting. Like there are people calling up with stories of things like you know, they were at the camp, they were enjoying the camp and things like that, and one night they went to bed and like all of the adults freaked out, woke them up in the middle of the night demanding that they deny Jesus. Jesus. Screaming and yelling at the kids demanding that they denounce Jesus and if you denounce Jesus you were sent home oh damn you know like complete mindfuck games yeah that's pretty hardcore so um god damn so yeah, there's no there's no plot, and I was too busy yelling at the movie. So let's just discuss a bit of our of the craziest moments. Yeah. Apparently, Christian kids love two things: they love Jesus, and they love rat tails. Yes. Those are the, the two things that Christian kids love more than anything else. Oh, really? Your name is Levi. That's original. Which is once again showing to me personally 
that Christians are 20 years behind the rest of the world. Yeah. This was 2006. There is no good reason for any child, any child, to have a rat tail. Yeah, yeah. I still see rat tails every once in a while here in Oklahoma, but then again, it's Oklahoma. Do you, you know? Do you snicker? Oh yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I point them out. I point them out like a, like I'm seeing a deer. Mm-hmm. I point out rat tails like other people point out horses while they're driving. <laughs> rat tail, rat tail. Eleanor, what are you doing? Are you... She's being Eleanor. You can't stop her. I'm gonna tie her down. Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, it's gonna. She's gonna release amazing music when she grows up. <laughs> and feed hardcore bondage. Yeah, but the music is gonna be amazing. I treat hey, her bad now. Yeah. Eleanor, get me the belt. I'm gonna make you a great musician. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> Nice, Eleanor. Thank you for helping me out there with that painful screech. They that will. Was, was... They will choose a, a kid at random, and say, "Okay, you are not a Christian anymore," and then engage the other kids to mock that child mercilessly. Jesus. God they damn. they lock them in prayer closets and shit. It's 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 much much worse than this movie. Jesus. The movie opens with a bit of narration about the culture war. Yeah, and it, it's frightening to think that like I I feel that there are a lot of liberals out there that are just like I think that. That, that liberals and atheists and Christians can all live together in peace and harmony. And it's scary to think that there are Christians that are thinking, it's fucking war. Which, you is, know? which is so fucked up, yeah. We need see, to destroy these liberal scum. Like, what the fuck? See, I, I, I'm an atheist, but I don't feel I am an anti-theist. You know? Yes. But yeah. I have I have my rules about what it means to be a good person. You know? And yeah. if you are breaking those rules, we got a problem. You know? If yeah. you feel you have the right to say who gets married and who doesn't get married, we have a problem. If you are trying to stop a woman's right, to her own sexual and biological freedom, we've got a problem. You know, if you're pushing Christian political candidates, we got a problem. If you're not doing any of that shit, okay, I don't care. Yeah. You know, I don't care what your batshit beliefs are because we all have batshit beliefs. True that. As long as your batshit beliefs aren't hurting anybody, we don't have a problem. If you want to show up in a group or something, and you want you want to start being a dick, we're going around. Yeah. Good. I just sent you the 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 full length trailer to the Disaster Artist. Yeah. Just FYI. Cool. I I. I I, I still have some Christian friends and I have no problem with them. You know, and there's that John Pavlov guy, you know, and I like his articles quite a bit. Yeah. You know, he's kind of a liberal pastor. Yeah. You know? I still have some Christian friends. I'm surprised that I'm still friends with Farm Boy Veteran. Yeah. What with all the shit that I post on it Facebook. It is amazing. He is truly showing Christian uh, tolerance towards mm. others that don't... Well, I like. I don't mean to be offensive or to, uh, to, to come to conclusions, to, to outlandish conclusions, but one of the things that I really liked about working and receiving yeah. with Farm Boy Veteran was 
I'm pretty sure I was the only minority he knew. <laughs> and I really felt that I opened his eyes to things he didn't think about. Like, yeah. I remember going oh, to Facebook God, you know. and seeing that one Facebook post about, wow, guys, have you heard about this Black Lives Matter thing? I mean, I support the police and law enforcement, but also you have to think of this from the minority's point of view. Black people are getting shot, and that's not good. So I guess what I'm saying is there are a lot of different sides to this. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, a farm boy veteran, I can see you're trying. Yeah. And you get, like, E for effort there, but you've also not said anything. So then I, 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 I go to the comments, and it's all these white people going, Josh, you're showing such a uh, farm boy veteran. Yeah, that out. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're I mean, showing such you're showing such uh wisdom for your age. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I think what you're like yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty sure you've only met white Christians your entire life living in a farm in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure I was kind of a good influence to you. Yeah. I mean, I just think that that if we had thousands and thousands of people in this country who actually followed what Jesus was saying, you know, yeah. that would be fucking awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. But we don't have that. We have we have a supernatural fan base that is acting more like Jesus than any Christian. Yeah. And that's a fucking fact. Yeah. I I think that 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 one of the most uncomfortable but best things that ever happened is when my work said, "Okay, you two guys are going to be working together. Steve, this is uh our current receiving manager. He is a hardcore fundamentalist Christian and will be reading the Bible during his breaks." Uh, uh, receiving manager. This is Steve. He created his own cult and cusses all the time. Guys, have fun working together in a uh, cramped space. Bye! <laughs> and it's like the best thing that ever happened was forcing the both of us to get along. Yeah. You know? Like, god damn, that was great. So basically what I'm saying is we need to get all of the liberals and conservatives and force them all to work together. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not in talking small about confined me. places. Yeah, no, we need to find confined spaces where everyone's going to work. Yes. With a Christian. <laughs> that's the best thing. That's the best thing for, for everyone right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I wonder if I can get away with just with just a Keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. So the movie, so so this documentary is very relevant to the now yeah. because these goddamn crazy ass Christians in this documentary are now literally in the White House taking over fucking politics. Yes. And it's so amazing to see. It, it's so amazing to see this film so far removed from the George W. Bush presidency and see all these Republicans going, George W. Bush was anointed by the right hand of God and yeah. chosen to lead Christians into the promised land because that's the exact same shit that these nutballs are saying about Donald Trump. Yeah. Mm hmm and as ridiculous as it seems to hear these people praying, not for George W. Bush, but praying to George W. Bush. Yes. Like, oh my God, we should all be looking at modern American politics right now. <laughs> yes. In this same light. So, so Becky Fisher talk, talks about Christian kids. Oh, the like the the scariest part of the movie is when Becky Fisher talks about how she wants to train Christian children to be willing to lay down their lives in the same way that kids lay down their lives for Islam. Yeah. That 
Exactly. She's raising Christian terrorists. Yes. Uh huh. That's you know what? I don't understand how Christian, Christian, Christians, Christians, yeah. Christians can look at Islam extremists and think that they don't have any comparable people in their religion. Yeah. When they're, I mean, are they forgetting? There was a war literally named after their religion. Did they forget about the holy wars for fuck's sake? Yeah. They raged fucking wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over their goddamn religion. They didn't just blow up planes and kill a couple hundred people. Planes, buildings, mm-hmm. whatever. You know what they did? They raged wars across entire nations for fuck's sake. Yeah. They need to get over themselves and remember their history before they start bashing other people. It's amazing. <laughs> maybe, to- maybe. They need to take into consideration that other religions are just a tad bit upset and still hold a, you know, centuries-old grudge on the fact that Christianity was pushed literally down everybody's fucking throat. And they were in prison if they weren't part of the Christian community or the Catholic community. Yeah. They were outcasts. They were burned at the stake for being witches. Oh, my. Just don't even fucking start I might have, I might have. Yeah. I I I might have told this story on the on the show before. I'm not sure, but one of my I, I I'm such a nerd. I actually have a fam- a favorite story of the Crusades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody does. I think. So they are fighting the Crusades. The Christians against the Muslims. They're fighting the Crusade, and it's all being controlled by the Catholic Church. Um. And the Christians are really basically losing. Because that's the other part about the Crusades, that the Christians basically got their asses handed to them. But while this is going on, and while the Muslims are killing Christians, one of the popes remembered that he sent this great king to set up a kingdom in the East. Okay? And there was this whole great mythical Christian kingdom basically on the other side of the battle. Okay? And he was coming with his armies. Okay? And that was going to be it. That's going to turn the the whole crusades over. Alright? And then they start hearing of rumors of, of Muslims getting attacked here and Muslims getting attacked there. And so everybody starts getting whipped up that this is this king coming and he's going to rescue us, you know? And they start getting more details and finding out more about it until it finally turns out it was the Mongol fucking horde who started killing everyone in sight. Christian or non-Christian, they didn't give a fuck about their little war. They were conquering. I find wow. that I find that uh, I find that so funny. That's amazing. Yeah, that is a pretty good favorite uh, crusade story to have. <laughs> Just the fact that you could say I have a favorite crusade story is like pretty impressive. I have. It's just so funny because it's because it's just like, here he comes, here comes our savior. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. I also have a favorite crusade story. Yes. Uh, Jaco. No, that's my my favorite crusade story is when. uh, the Nazis are about to kill Indiana Jones, but then his dad is like, I can scare these pigeons on the beach with my umbrella. Yes. And he mm-hmm. scares the pigeons, and the pigeons fly into the Nazis' plane, and the plane crashes. Yes. That was a good one, too. With Sean Connery's all, I suddenly remembered my Charlemagne. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was a pretty Sean good Connery. Indiana Jones dad. Yeah. So, these poor kids are... Eleanor, stop scratching me. You're ruining the podcast. touching your dad. 
Oh no! These poor kids are being homeschooled, but they're also being taught that science is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and that global warming is a myth and shit. And, and the worst part, that rat tails are still culturally relevant. <laughs> yeah. Yes, actually worse than everything else. Because you yeah. have to, because these days you have to remove all of reality in order to believe in your religion. Yeah. You have to yeah. denounce, you know, like, like again, and this I definitely mentioned, like you'll start off with a conversation about evolution with somebody and they're talking about the Big Bang. Like, they, they don't get that the Big Bang has nothing to do with evolution. You're now switching topics. And as you talk with them, you realize that they are denying all science is what they're doing. Yeah. And they think yeah. evolution is all science. Yeah. But, money. Yes. There are some relatable moments in this film. How many times have you gone bowling with your favorite chick tract? <laughs> yes. And, and I called it. I was like, that is so totally a chick track. Yeah. You're just laying down on the floor, reading your favorite chick track, waiting for your turn to bowl. Like, yeah. oh, God, that was my entire childhood. Yeah. Jeannie's, yeah. Jeannie's favorite, because she's gone to bed, so I have to say her favorites for her. Yes. Her, yes. her favorite was... The, the little girl who who was praying as she was bowling. Yes. You know, Jesus, let me get a strike. And she yeah. threw it, and she got a gutter ball, and Jeannie was just like, Jesus doesn't love you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that was the same girl who was later seen breakdancing to Christian heavy metal music. Uh, no, that was the other no, one. Different girl? Yeah. Okay. Uh, boop. Thank you, Eleanor, for booping me. Uh, okay, again, Bunny can't see you uh, waving, but he can feel your waving in his heart. Yes, so yes, I can. Okay, again, Bunny can't see you. Bunny can't see you. Bunny can't see you. Oh. Are you trying to kiss Bunny? Oh, that was adorable. You kissed Bunny. Yeah. Unfortunately, Bunny likes you just as a friend, okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Stop making out with Bunny. Okay. Stop. Seriously, stop kissing Bunny. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now you're making Bunny uncomfortable. Okay? Jeez. Then it's time, finally, for, um, um, for camp. For... Becky Fisher can't. Becky Fisher and her friends are praying over the seats. Seriously. Yes. Seriously. I'm going to start doing that for story time. And the sound system and oh, the electricity. Yeah, that. If there's a mic problem or a problem with the electricity, that's the devil. Yes. That is the devil. It's definitely not a technical Yeah, it's not a technical difficulty. It's Satan trying to stop. Uh-huh. Than from being successful. Yeah, that's buy, buy new cables, I, bitch. Yeah, that's that was always my favorite part about Christianity is that you had a built-in villain that you could blame everything on. Yes. Man, I got really hung over last night. It's obvious that the devil was mm -hmm. spiking my drinks. <laughs> like, oh, honey, I'm sorry that I couldn't get it up. But the devil was stopping my erection. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The devil? Yeah. I believe he's dead. You know what? I bet you a lot of male What's... white Christians use that as, I'm sorry, honey, the devil forced me to stick my dick in that other man's ass. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yes, and that's coming up. <laughs> later. We're gonna we're gonna be ending the film with a discussion about that exact thing, honey. Very excited about this. Um, farm boy veteran listened to a lot of Christian rap. Yeah. So much Christian rap. It was amazing. I'm gonna start listening to Chris Christian rap and the Offspring. And the Offspring. Which was odd. <laughs> yeah. He listened to a lot of Christian rap and then. 
pretty fly for a white guy. Well, he is pretty fly for a white guy yeah. in Oklahoma. Yeah. It's it, it, it's it was weird because it's like a, a rap song called Praise Jesus, and then you gotta keep them separated. <laughs> Never understood the connection to those, but also I didn't bother caring. <laughs> there was some real brainwashing in the camp, although to be fair, uh, uh, hey, my homie, we're kicking it, kicking it for Christ. Yes. Yeah. Eleanor, are you kicking it for Christ? Mwah, thank you for the yeah. kiss. Okay, you want another kiss? No. Oh, you just want to kick it for Christ? That's also cool. That's all. Uh, oh, you want to kiss funny again? Not okay. Not even got, not even got we're we're talking about the movie oh, right now. No. This is the movie. But okay, now, stop. but now, if if you stop were kissing, hey Eleanor, leave Bunny alone. Jesus, <laughs> she will not stop kissing you. Okay. Okay. Now that's enough kissing, Bunny. No more kissing, Bunny. I'm sorry. I know you love Bunny. I want to make out with him, but I gotta do the show. Don't laugh at me. No, stop kissing him. Stop kissing him. No. Okay. But thank you for kissing me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yup. Thank you. Hey. No, Eleanor, you're not Eleanor, kissing. Ellie, Ellie. Stop kissing my podcast. You're making out with my podcast. Hello. Dang. That's how, crazy. How do you think it would feel? If you were offspring, how do you think it would feel that somehow accidentally you've built up a big Christian fan base? Christian fan base? Yeah. In my in my mind, like I really did think about this. Like, why are you a fan of Christian rap and the offspring? Is that the closest I can get to understanding that is to a conservative evangelical Christian, the offspring is the closest thing to punk that he will ever get. <laughs> that to a conservative Christian, the offspring is the Sex Pistols. Like, that's his the Ramones. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's pretty accurate. I, I think you make that's a good case there. The yeah. And it's frightening. Yeah. Uh, to him, that was as rebellious as he gets. It's like uh, you know? I am so proud that I've that I've raised my mediocre child. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One girl talks about dead churches. I liked that scene. Yeah. Oh, it, it, oh, and uh uh, there's a scene where they're breaking cups, and and yes. it, it's so creepy because each cup represents a different thing that they're destroying, like the government and yeah. schools, and, and it's really creepy. And there's this creepy synth music that's it, it's so creepy, generic synth that number one, for a second, I thought I was watching Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, and number two, I this the music was so generic creepy synth music that I thought for sure that the credits would say original music by John Carpenter. Yes. <laughs> thought for sure his name was going to be at the end of this. Yeah. Like, oh yes, I, I also did the music for Jesus Camp. By the way, like a fun little postscript, this camp has since been canceled due to pressure and threats from people who saw this movie. Yeah. Just a, just a, a fun little thing I wanted to mention there. That ain't One breaking thing, my heart. That's not breaking my heart. And I'm watching this film, and Belle is just getting angry and pissed off and yelling. And this is why, this is why I hate the Bible and I hate Christians. This movie is horrible. And I'm like, Bella, there are some good parts of this film. And she's like, like what? And it's like, well, um, for starters, I I I love watching young white kids cry. <laughs> So uh, there's there's one good thing right there. I don't, I haven't seen the, these many white kids cry since uh, one of the Wiggles was arrested for kitty porn. Yeah. 
I'm assuming. I don't actually know. Um, uh, interesting side note. I was watching the film for like the third or fourth time, and, and I'm like side watching Maxwell, and he's going through my bag today. This is today. And I was like, Maxwell, stop going through my bag. And he says, uh, Dad, I didn't do that. The devil made me do that. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. Like, how do I even start with this, you know? Mm -hmm. But anyway, here's the best part of the movie, okay, honey? You'd be interested in this. Um, the endish of the movie takes you inside of a soulless, massive megachurch run yeah. by evangelical pastor Ted Haggard. Yes. Who at the time of this documentary was the president of the NAE, the National Association of Evangelicals, a powerful group that loves to rally against the evils of abortion and especially the evils of LBGTQ people. Yes. In Ted, Ted Haggard is quite famous. Ted Haggard is kind of on a, a, a Joel Olstein level. And yeah, you will watch true. you will watch many documentaries and see Ted Haggard poking up. I've I've seen him yeah. speaking with Richard Dawkins, you know? Ah, yeah. In in yeah. in one of his documentaries. So Teddy Boy pops up a lot, but please continue okay so ted haggard is even in this movie up on the pulpit rallying against the evils of gay people at one point he looks in the camera and literally says all spooky like he looks directly at the camera and says i know what you did last night <laughs> <laughs> give me a thousand dollars or i'll tell your wife uh-huh and I'm like, oh yeah, that's something you just really innocently say and, and not at all. Yeah, you're not projecting anything. At, at this point, Jeannie kept saying, why was that funny? Why was that funny? Why was that, why was that yeah. other thing? Because they were all laughing and she's like, why was that funny? And I'm like, yeah, why was that funny? <laughs> Yeah, no, everybody, everybody's laughing. He later even says, like, it, again, directly to the camera, you need to repent. So, oh, guess what, honey? Guess what? Guess what, honey? Bunny needs to repent? No, 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 no. Um, no, Tasha, you're going to love former this. Former pastor. Yeah, you're going to love this. Former pastor Ted Haggard was eventually caught spending thousands of dollars on gay prostitution and buying meth with said gay prostitute. Uh, yeah, bitches. And also masturbating with a fellow male, male church member. They yes. made this movie and then literally with, the scandal broke shortly yeah. afterwards. With money that was embezzled from the church, he did this too. Yeah, yeah. With money he took from the church. He's buying gay prostitutes and doing crystal meth. Mm -hmm. On the positive side, he's not doing meth because that's for poor people. Yeah. No, since he has a lot of money, he can afford the crystal meth. Yes. That's like me. I'm not going to do the cocaine. I'm doing the gold cocaine. And he was, he was doing this over the course of three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it really adds just a wonderful, hilarious element to him being in this documentary, looking at the camera, saying, "I know what you did last night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me the money, or I'll tell your wife." Oh, it 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 made That's my so great. it made my drives home from work so pleasant. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. pleasant as different parts of the story. It 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 was so reminiscent of Jim Baker's fall. You oh know? yeah. Except oh, yeah. he didn't fall. He's still in that church. Everything's yeah, he's cool. Still, yeah, he still has a TV show. He's still selling survival food buckets and shit. No, no, so I meant Ted, Ted Haggard. Oh, Ted Haggard. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got the story of Ted Haggard. I've got the story of Ted Haggard. Uh-huh. Um, Ted Haggard uh, uh, originally denied doing the gaiety, but admitted to buying the drugs 
but denied doing the drugs. Like, he just admitted to buying them. He didn't do them, and also he's not gay. Yeah. So I guess it was a really I didn't inhale thing, but he was talking about meth and cock. Yeah. <laughs> but he apparently didn't deny it too hard, because shortly later he entered gay conversion therapy. Yeah. And then later admitted to all of it. And obviously he had to resign from the National Association of Evangelicals. Now, then Ted Haggard and his family moved to Phoenix, where they no doubt voted for Joe Arpaio a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, he, for a while, he gave up the whole preaching thing and became like a real estate agent. Then <laughs> he moved back to uh, Colorado. He repented and he agreed to be in an HBO documentary called The Trials of Ted Haggard, which he hoped would revitalize his rep and his image, and people would see straight from the horse's mouth that he feels bad for all of the things that he totally did, but now he's repented, and he's been born again, and he's found Jesus yet again. He was hiding right behind Waldo, and now he's ready to lead the people again. So the documentary comes out, and then immediately after this documentary, uh, which came out in 2009, Shortly afterwards, oh, surprise, surprise, more sex allegations. <laughs> so now he's he he is he is still with the church and he has his own congregation, but he is legally not allowed to return to a new life church. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I thought he was still he, in the new life church. No, he's still in he's still in the evangelical religion and he's got his own like a uh, crew. Yeah. But, uh, uh, apparent the, uh, some of the sex allegations that broke after the 2009 documentary is the fact that new line church knew about all the shit that was happening and paid a shit ton of money to victims. Yeah. And so when Hush that, money. Broke, yeah, yeah, so when that broke, New Line Church literally had to like sever ties. So so uh, New Line Church gave Ted Haggard a severance package, and part of that severance package meant that Ted Haggard had to literally agree to never set foot in another New Line Church. <laughs> nice, I hadn't heard that part. Yeah, so he's still out there and he's still preaching. His fucking uh, Wikipedia page is huge. But he is legally not allowed to enter into a, a new life church again. I, I guess um, I, I guess I just made the assumption that he pulled a Jimmy Swagger and it was all okay. Yeah, because everybody does. Everybody does. Lord, I have yeah. sinned in front of your eyes. Yeah, with the tears coming down of his yeah. eyes and shit. Yeah, another another classic clip from Christianity. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this picture of a fox. Here you go. Um, so that's all I have for Jesus Camp. Do you have anything that I may have uh, missed? Oh, most definitely. The end. The end. And we should bring up that article a little bit. Uh, the Yeah. The end where they were out on this, where, where Rat Tail and Chubby Cheeks were on the, on the corner pamphlet passing out chick tracks and trying to proselytize to people yes yeah yeah and she's like yeah. do you think do you think they think we're selling something we're kids what are we going to be selling hey bitch how about fucking cookies raffle yeah. tickets magazine subscriptions yeah. and all sorts of shit my we're favorite kids part. what are we selling my favorite part of the movie was at the end when Jesus wakes up in bed next to Suzanne Flechette. Yes. It turns out the whole uh, Jesus camp thing was just a dream. Yeah. In Jesus' head. That was my favorite part. <laughs> Everything should end like that. I mean... With Suzanne Flechette in bed. E even if it is for Jesus, Okay. Do you really think you should have your kids hustling their asses on a street corner? Yeah. You know, I mean, Jesus needs prostitutes? Why? Yeah. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. 
so you sent me an article just before the show and I read it. Yeah, and and it's like uh ten years later, what are the kids from Jesus Camp doing? And it, like I I find the article interesting and I also uh find it not interesting because yeah. it's like, okay, it's one kid in the documentary uh left religion and now he's living with like a some sort of commune up in the woods in california yeah he he left christianity and joined another wacky cult yeah yeah you know he hates his time so tell me he's not damaged (laughs) yeah but at the same time the fucking rat tail kid which actually stars in this whole goddamn documentary is like he's married and he's happy and he still preaches and he loves his time at the camp and there's no problems with him of which of which I was reading through that and I was like you know yeah it figures this this was the golden child yeah in the in the, the whole thing yeah he was the golden child and I loved Ted Haggis Haggard saying, um, yeah, use, use the little boy cuteness until you have good content. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Something tells me he wanted to taste that kid's good content. <laughs> Fucking Ted Haggard. That is just so fake it till you make it, which is a big part of Christianity. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. also a big part of every rapper's first album. Yeah. You 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 fake speaking in tongues until you convince yourself you are actually speaking in tongues. Emerald spoke in tongues a couple of times. Yeah. I so, speak in tongues. You know, you know who else used to speak in tongues? Uh, Yosemite Sam every time he heard himself. Sam? Yes, yes. Yeah. Every time he would hurt himself. Russell, Russell, Russell. And he was Did, praising you, the Lord. Have you seen the video of uh, Rick and Morty and the Joel Osteen church? No. There's some sort of podcast out there where they, where the entire podcast is centered around voice over cartoon actors. Yeah, who do voiceovers for fav- for famous cartoon characters, and they mess with them and have them do different things. I saw one episode where they had the entire cast, all of the voiceover people who did the okay. the main characters from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo from the original '80s cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they had them as the Ninja Turtles reading a script for an episode of Seinfeld. Okay. Hey, Elaine, what's up? Oh, nothing. I just came back from Kramer's. What? It was really weird. They're always experimenting like that. And so in their latest episode, they got the guy who plays Rick from Rick and Morty and had him actually call the Joel Osteen prayer line (laughs) as Rick. And it's amazing because it's some old like white chick and uh, Rick starts asking all these questions about Joel Osteen. And anytime the woman is pressed with any pertinent question, she starts speaking in tongues. Yeah. And it's pretty, it's amazing how quickly this stranger starts speaking in tongues. <laughs> like literally like two minutes into this call, she's just is speaking like in crazy talk. But the amazing part is, is that Rick is like, what are you doing? Is that baby talk? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so he starts pretending to speak in tongues to this woman who's actually speaking in tongues. And the woman starts laughing yeah. and Rick calls her out on that and says, you're laughing. See, you're laughing at this because even you know this is ridiculous. Yeah. It's an amazing call, and I've watched it like a bajillion times, and I can't I can't not laugh. Especially when Rick is like faking the 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 speaking in tongues like Ricky Tiki Taki Taki. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's on YouTube and it's just Rick and Morty, Joel Osteen. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. You need to watch this. I'll send it to you. 
one of one of my favorite atheists, somebody I really like to keep up on, is this man called Aaron Ra. Aaron Ra is is amazingly intelligent and very well versed in what he is speaking on. Okay, and has been arguing with Christians since the Usenet days. Okay. Wow. You know, where you would make up some kind of a handle, and his first name is Aaron, so he decided Aaron Ra, that kind of sounds like the Egyptian god, that's kind of cool. Okay? Yeah. And what's really fun about Aaron Ra is that he naturally looks like every Satanist from a chick track. Nice. Okay. Yeah. He looks exactly like that and like, oh God, you you've got to scare the hell out of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've got to if you if, look like that. Yeah, if Christians see you coming, you are exactly what they expected to see coming. And it's yeah. hysterical. Uh and, and he does he does a lot of serious shows, very serious shows. Like he has Ten separate episodes of of just disproving the flood. Okay, nice. where he speaks about it from different perspectives. Like, okay, today we're talking about the flood and why it's impossible from a geological standpoint. Here is the flood, and here is why it's impossible from an evolutionary standpoint. And he did ten of these. Here it is from a cultural perspective. You know, all of it, and all really intelligent. But one day he made this show. He was just driving down the road, and there was a big Christian billboard saying whatever it said, and it was like, questions? And it gave a phone number. And he's in Texas, so that's like Oklahoma, so I'm sure he had a long drive with nothing to do. So he called, and he was like, I have questions. Nice. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. And he just ripped up this poor Christian guy who just answered the phone. <laughs> Aww. That's good. Oh, that's got to be wonderful. Yes. It's fun. It's fun. Um... I don't know what else I have to say about this. I, I think we, we did a good job covering it. I, I think we've done a great job covering it. These kids, job. These kids scare me. Like, like I need yes. to imagine a brick wall so that they don't get through, you know? Um, yep. and, and, and I think it's horrible. I think it's horrible. And again, from what I've, what I've heard, um, that's literally not the half of it. That is... Yeah, some of the stories that I have heard are like bone chilling. You know, yeah. like yeah. they'll 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 tell the kids, yeah, because okay, the, these are all different stories from all different types of things like this. It's not this particular camp, you know. Yeah, so they're all independent stories, and there are a fucking lot of them. Some of the kids they'll get to camp, and they will tell them that. That's it. You, your your parents actually signed you over to us, and you're Jesus. not seeing your parents anymore. You are working for the Lord now. You know? Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ! They won't. They won't feed them for any slight mistakes they would have made. You know? Yeah. Yeah, all all types of of like, oh my fucking god, this is horrible. So yes, this is slanted, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't care if it's showing them a bit in a bad light, because because again, this is all the stuff. What you're seeing is all the stuff that they thought was perfectly okay. <laughs> yeah, and they approved all of this. So sure, it's it's edited a, as a slam, but it still it still happened. 
Yeah. Ooh. We should probably wrap this up because I need to pee. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Uh, just being honest. No, no problem. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have anything more. I think we've done a wonderful job. Uh, and remember, next week for homework, we are watching uh the Martin Bashir so-called documentary. Uh, living with Michael Jackson. Yes. And the movie next week. Look, you don't want to do this. Okay. And I don't want to do this. Okay. We both don't want to do this. But we have to do this. Okay. Next week, we're watching Tom Cruise's fucking mummy movie. Okay. It's <laughs> it's the start of the dark universe, which is still such a horrible fucking name. Which is going to make me cry and ruin my childhood. But we have to watch this. We have to watch this. Yes. Unfortunately, we have to do this. So that's is, next week. Is there a cough cough on that? What do you mean? Is there a cough cough on the Tom Cruise mummy movie? Uh, yes, yes, there is a cough, 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 okay. cough, um, check the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's... Oh, that's gonna hurt. I think it's T-M-M-M, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. but it's there. Uh, so yes, that's next week. We're watching Tom Cruise's The Mummy, whether we want to or not. <laughs>